The Age of the Empire is the darkest era in galactic history, as the Empire were one of the most oppressive regimes in recent memory, with Emperor Palpatine finally achieving his goal, and the Jedi being no more. With the shadow of the Emperor and Darth Vader looming, surviving Jedi were hunted down and slaughtered by the dozens at a time, and being a former Jedi was perhaps one of the most egregious acts and dangerous death sentences to have looming over one's head. While many Jedi were hunted and killed in the years following Order 66 and fall of the Republic, a select few were able to survive the dying days of the Empire, and survive 20 years past the official fall of the Jedi Order. One of the most prolific and famous Jedi to have survived the view of the Empire and remain hidden for the greatest part of the next two decades was Grandmaster Yoda. Despite being one of the most powerful Force users in the known galaxy, and one of the most influential figures of the prequel era, Yoda was not able to stop the fall of the Jedi in subsequent Rise of the Empire and the Sith. However, he was able to evade capture or even detection by Palpatine and Vader until meeting his natural death on Dagobah shortly before the fall of the Empire and the liberation of the galaxy, at the hands of a newly formed Jedi in Luke Skywalker. But how was one of the most famous Jedi Masters in galactic history able to survive for all of that time, despite of course being public enemy number one? How was a being as deeply connected to the Force's Master Yoda able to remain hidden from the view of the Empire? And how did he do this for two decades? Well, stick with us, Acolytes of the Galaxy, and let's explore exactly how Yoda managed to survive, as well as what made Dagobah an ideal hiding space for the Jedi Master. First though, according to our analytics, a lot of you guys that watch the channel haven't actually subscribed yet. So if you've been enjoying the content and would like to stay up to date with everything Star Wars related, force crush that subscribe button. Part of what made Order 66 so effective was the fact that the clones were completely emotionless when enacting their directive. This meant that their Jedi generals did not sense any deception of malevolence until it was far too late and these Jedi were completely caught off guard by the betrayal. There was no emotion involved, it was simply orders. When Order 66 commenced, only a few Jedi were able to sense the calamity that was being wrought across the galaxy, and only a select few Force sensitives became attuned of this and aware of their brethren being slaughtered in the moment that it happened. Yoda was one such Jedi. Grandmaster Yoda sensed a powerful ripple in the Force, as thousands of Jedi were executed within a matter of minutes. The clones turned against them, and this gave him advanced warning that something was not right. Although Yoda did not know exactly what was wrong, he did know that there was much pain in the galaxy that was not there previously. This tremor in the Force led to him killing the clone forces as they turned on him, and was likely one of the most integral factors in Yoda's survival. If Yoda had been unable to sense the destruction of the Order and the Jedi in the galaxy around him, he too likely would have perished and been caught off guard, as so many of the Jedi that he had trained were. Likely, Yoda himself not surviving Order 66. Turning to the native Wookiee of Kashyyyk for assistance, they helped Yoda to evade the armada of the Empire that had newly formed and escape off-world in order to help the Grand Master make one attempt to save the galaxy from oppression by directly killing the Emperor. From here, Yoda would rely on a network of trusted allies, as he would return to Coruscant in order to face Emperor Palpatine himself in single combat, dueling the leader of the new regime to a stalemate before fleeing the fight. With the help of Bail Organa, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and a select few senators and Wookiees, Yoda was able to make his way to the planet known as Dagobah, where he would presumably remain for the next 19 years. We currently have no indication that Yoda ever left Dagobah or the Swampland in the following two decades, and it stands to reason that he remained here for the entirety of his exile. But what made Dagobah such a compelling hiding place to begin with, and why did the Grand Master select it as his planet for exile? The planet of Dagobah, besides Tatooine, is perhaps the most important planet of all to Star Wars lore. The first aspect of the planet that made it so appealing to the Grand Master was its inherent ability to mask the presence of incredibly powerful Force-sensitive individuals such as himself. Dagobah was a cesspool of force energy that was swirled into a chaotic cycle of light and dark, with little rhyme nor reason. 
The reason for this was directly attributed to the rampant wildlife present on the planet that was left completely unchecked by technological societies. As the force is an energy field that thrives off of the energy of life and living creatures, this created an incredibly powerful cycle of force energy that flowed between one of the most diverse planets in the galaxy, not to mention these various species and animals being completely unchecked. This made Dagobah possible for Yoda not only to remain hidden, but but allowed Yoda and Luke Skywalker, two of the most powerful force sensitives of a generation, to train together, train in the force without raising any suspicion from the Empire or those that hunted the Jedi. We know from the past that Vader is able to sense other Force users, as he senses Obi-Wan's arrival to the Death Star, and he is also able to sense things about his children. And so the fact that Luke and Yoda were able to coexist for weeks on end, both exerting Force-related powers, just goes to show you how Dagobah was such a perfect hiding spot for Yoda. But there is more to what made Dagobah the perfect spot for Yoda to hide out for nearly two decades. It was also the site where he originally communed with the late Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn, who had just begun to discover the secret to preserving one's consciousness within the cosmic force following death, therefore giving Yoda previous experience on the planet thanks to the Clone Wars. Dagobah's close affinity to the force allowed Master Jinn to manifest himself as a voice and guide Yoda in his teachings, a practice that he could continue in his exile without arousing suspicion nor detection from the Empire and those that sought him out. This is also why Obi-Wan is able to create such a tangible and solid force manifestation of a force ghost on Dagobah, despite his force form being rather weak in other locations. On Hoth, Obi-Wan is a loosely formed visage, who is only able to briefly commune with Luke Skywalker before being spread too thin and dissipating into the force. And it's widely been theorized that this is why Obi-Wan couldn't appear on the Death Star or in other technologically dominant regions that were devoid of natural light. Dagobah though is what is called a force nexus or a location exceptionally powerful in the force. But what made Dagobah so perfect is that it held no allegiance in the force whatsoever. In fact, some force wielders have even theorized that Dagobah was predominantly dominated by the dark side of the force, making it the perfect hiding ground for a force signature as light as Yoda's. This is why the energy surrounding Dagobah was strong enough for Kenobi to not only appear in a physical form, but to actually interact with the world around him, as we see him moving vines and sitting on logs, interacting with the physical plane. But this isn't where the mysteries of Dagobah end, as well as why Yoda ultimately chose it. Another major enticing factor about Dagobah was the distance from the Empire, as it existed in a desolate region in the outer rim of space, virtually untouched by the galactic regime, nor the Republic that preceded it. So far as we know, there are no cities on Dagobah and no imperialism or development of any kind to speak of, meaning that the Empire was never enticed to explore the planet any further, seeing it as practically useless. This simply meant that there was nobody on Dagobah to even look for Yoda, and should anyone venture to the swampland in search of the Master, it was incredibly easy for Yoda to not only hide his Force presence, but to also hide physically and blend it at the surrounding foliage. While keeping a low profile until the arrival of Luke in search of assistance, Yoda was able to avoid Imperial detection by simply remaining quiet enough and secluded enough. This is why, of all the planets, debatably, Dagobah is the absolute pinnacle if you were a Jedi in hiding. But anyway my friends, what did you think about this? What are your thoughts on Dagobah as a planet and why Yoda selected it to hide from the Empire, Vader, and Sidious? And do you like the canon and legends explanations for why Yoda was able to hide so efficiently? As always acolytes and force sensitives, thank you guys so much for watching the channel. May the force be with you and have a great day.